Image classification models can check to see if you are in a picture, see what you're doing, see what you're wearing. So I decided that I wanted to know, what do those models think a rabbit looks like? <laughs> What does it mean for a model to think, anyway? Can machine learning models think in the first place? No. But I can't think of the right word, so we're gonna roll with it. Basically, a classification model thinks something looks like something if it classifies it as such. But I don't just want to generate an image that is classified as a rabbit. I want to generate the most rabbit-like thing in existence. So no rabbits wearing shark outfits or rabbits in the jungle or rabbits wearing shark outfits in the jungle, just a rabbit. Now there's a wide field of study in machine learning called interpretability. And it probably already has a way to do what I want, but I haven't heard it before, so... <laughs> I went with the easiest possible solution. I trained a model, I trained a generator. Until the classifier said it was generating images of the right class. <laughs> Given a class, like Rabbit, a generator makes an image for that class, and then a pre-trained classifier predicts what that image is. You might have noticed that this works in the same way as an autoencoder. You might know that an autoencoder only works if the middle is smaller than the input. Otherwise, the autoencoder will just learn to pass the input through the network. And you might notice that my model is larger in the middle than the inputs. What, what do I do? I just spent four months on a sham. No, I'm just messing. The classifier is pre-trained. So if I make the classifier not trainable, because it's pre-trained, I don't need to train it anymore, then the generator will be forced to generate images because it has no way the network has no way of learning how to pass information through without first generating an image that the classifier can understand as a thing. So what is the classifier that I used? I'm glad you asked. New and amazing classification models are getting released all the time, trained on larger and larger data sets with bigger and better models. So I, I used VGG16 that was pre-trained on ImageNet. But what about the generator? Google starts with a fully connected layer, then a fully connected layer, then transposed convolution, and another transposed convolution. Facebook does the same. I start with an embedding layer. Yep. Then I do what they did. You know, I thought that was a new, interesting generator design. And then when I was writing this, I found out that Big Gan did the same thing. Except theirs is better than mine. <sighs> what was the point of this again? To generate an image of what a model thinks something looks like. Not just that though, we want it to generate an image of the most thing-like thing that model's ever seen. What is the most thing-like thing? The thing that is farthest away from anything else. How do we tell what image is farthest away from being classified as something else? This is the good bit. You see, 
The last layer of the network is the classification layer. It takes the representation of the image and it produces a guess for what that image is. We don't need that guess. We need that image representation. You see, a natural way to determine what class an arbitrary input belongs to is to cluster the data. That is, the representations from this layer should fall into different areas on a graph, where each area represents a certain class. If I assume that every area doesn't have a hole in it, then all I need to do is to find the image representing the center of that area. How do I find the center of that area? I add noise to the representation of that second to last layer. I add noise a whole bunch of times, creating a sphere of lots of different points around that representation. So instead of asking the last layer if this center point is a rabbit, I'm asking it if all of these points are rabbits. Once it learns to create an image so that all of the points in the sphere are rabbits, I increase the size of the sphere and repeat until it's no longer possible for the sphere to get any larger and still have most points classify as a rabbit. Since the center point is a representation of the generated rabbit, once the sphere can't grow any larger, I know the generated rabbit is as different as possible from being a cock. If you're lost, don't worry. All you need to know is that given a thing, a second thing produces an image, and then a third thing tries to guess if that image is the first thing. Now if I run this thing, I get this. This is a rabbit. When I double check my code, I see the model is 100% confident. Huh. What does a cup look like? A cab? A safe? Why are all of them these noisy pieces of shit? I'm wrong. My initial assumption's wrong. The thing that's farthest from everything else isn't the most thing-like thing. It's the thing least like everything else. For instance, if I'm generating two types of fish, the fish in the center of this sphere shouldn't have anything in common with the fish in this sphere. That means they shouldn't have any scales, fins, or even the same shape. Tell me, what does a fish look like without that? Hmm? Nothing like a fish, that's for sure. Okay, that leaves two possibilities. One, all realistic images lie on the edges of these spheres. Or two, the model has no idea what anything is at all. It just takes textures or combinations of textures and combines them to represent each class. Let me just double check real quick. If I do an ostrich, oh, I can almost kind of see it. If I do a fox squirrel, I could see something. I don't think that's a squirrel though. If I do a catamaran, I could see the sailboat and the water. Oh, the water kind of looks like it's on fire. <laughs> So most of the time, the generated images just kind of look like blobs. Though sometimes they kind of look like a thing, you know, if you squint at it in the right way. If all of these images represent what the different classes don't have in common with each other, then it kind of acts as a sort of suggestion. That is, we need more images with these shapes and these textures in our data set, as these shapes and textures are likely what the model is overfitting on. Alternatively, we could figure out what shapes and textures are in common between the generated images and all of the images in the data set. 
That way we could figure out what images and what parts of each image the model is overfitting on and which ones it's ignoring. For that to work though, I'd need to know whether or not each class has one cluster or multiple clusters. Now that I think about it, does the noise actually do anything? First, I train with no noise. Then, from where I left off, I train it longer without noise. The picture evolves. On the other hand, if I train it longer with noise, I get nearly what I started with, meaning the noise is actually preventing it from converging. That's not supposed to be the case. Run it again. I train until the loss gets really small with no noise. Then I train it longer without noise, and I get this. It's different, but also not that different. If I train it longer with noise, it's also different, but not that different. <sighs> uh... That means the difference is likely just due to random trance and not because of my noise. Then again, I didn't run enough times to make sure that that was the case, so maybe the noise is pointless. Maybe it's not, but it probably is though. <laughs> More pleasant news, I randomly generated this picture of a rabbit. It's, it's pretty badass. Look at it. Anyway, if you want to see all my results, my experiment notes, or run the experiment yourself, it's all available at patreon.com slash intuitive ml. I'm gonna go think about things for a while.